so no confusions now with this calendar so no, we're fine thank you okay so uh so in like the other appli applications or other sort of tools like uh people soft they have a pay complete or pay confirm day on monday or a tuesday based on the client requirement but uh and the both payment or uh, the retro payment or the on cycle payment gets completed on the same day but in work day the retro pay will get first completed in the in the system for that period and on the next day we are going to process the on cycle this is the work day functionality and this is how the every client works for it so like example on tuesday we have a payroll complete so the retro complete will be on 8 same like for the second pay period which is uh, september 14 to september uh, august october 4 the payroll complete is at 23rd september and the retro pay complete will be at 22nd okay so for any paycheck or, or any process we go every process has has a sub category uh, we can uh, we can call it as a first is the retro payment second is a current dated payment and the third one is a future dated payment and i believe for every tool whether it is a uh, uh, workday sap or people soft if any request is processed or future dated the system will take care automatically uh, and will process those uh, inst- transactions automatically in future since they have updated now with a future transaction any process which is current dated again it will process automatically by the workday but it depends like example as i said uh the current period is august 31st to september 13 and the second period is september 14 to october 4 here so if the current dated current dated pay, 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 payment is processed before cut off which is 5th of october sorry 5th of september or 19th of september okay then it will get processed in the current period otherwise it will fall in a retro payment for the retro payment as usual anything which is uh, anything which is a prior date so it will get uh, it will get processed in work day uh, or it is called as retro, uh, retro payment and work day will first look into it whether it is supported event or unsupported event okay last time i gave example on this higher date and all that so let me uh, explain you in detail like uh, <coughs> what exactly uh, retro is so the the retro pay calculation okay it recalculates um, an employee earnings and deductions uh, that are configured for the retro processing okay uh, in a response to uh, supported retroactive changes this system recalculates the pay components which is earnings and deductions for every pay period starting from the period in which uh the change is effective through the current period so this period the system got freezed for a while can you see my screen now is it moving Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for the retro, every differences of earnings or deductions are processed in the employee currently regular payment paycheck, and uh, and all the retro payments are subject to taxes and deductions in the current period. Okay. Now, uh, last time I t- uh, I told you about this example, which is an app PTD or no retro prior to uh, prior to date formula uh, <clears throat> prior to date so what is that date so this date is nothing but this is the earliest date for which work day can process a supported event of retroactive changes for any employee uh, this is called as no retro prior to date like example as i said suppose uh, employee was hired on march and suddenly employee salary got changed in october now for this the earliest date uh, for the work day is march 2020 and 
in this case workday will process this uh, letter of payment in october but in the second case the employee was hired on march 2020 then there was a transfer in may 2020 and in october there is a salary change to thirty thousand dollar now here the earliest date will be may 2020 not march 2020 so in this case uh, if we if the hcm team the wa team, go ahead and process uh, salary change effective march 2020 now what workday will do here workday will first check what is the earliest date if the earliest date which is set up as no retro prior to date uh, as March 2020 then in this case the workday will process the retro payment if it is uh, if workday sees that oh there is a May 2020 but the date was updated as March 2020 salary change then workday will call it out this as unsupported event uh, since the workday will not process a retro payment for these uh, for these transaction because as per operations point of view, the retro payment needs to be calculated effective March 2020. But when Workday is looking at it, Workday is looking at the configuration, the no retro prior to date is May 2020. Are we following? Yes. Okay. So, uh, as I said, supported retro changes uh, made. Uh, or after this date can be picked up or processed by the retro pay calculation. And uh, if any date, which is uh, workday, will not process any retro changes, uh, <coughs> retro changes prior to this date. Okay. So uh, I have uh, a doubt, Tushan here. Say this. Uh, Tushar, uh, Priya, my name Tushar. is Tushar. Yeah. <laughs> I am really sorry. I mixed it. So yes, uh, NRPTD, this date, mm -hmm. uh, Tushar. Uh, so this is a date set uh, at a company level, or is it like uh, at for? I mean, how is this? This it date? Is, no, it is not at a company level. It is a, in general. This is a workday functionality. Okay. So, so I'm saying, day, what will be the that date? Uh, uh, so what will be the, So example, if your client is going live with workday, okay, effective January 2021. Then this mm -hmm. date will be January 2021. On mm -hmm. any higher or any higher date for an employee. Okay. Okay. But in between, if employee is transferred from one location to another, suppose from US to Canada or Canada to US, then the rate no retro prior to date change date will get changed. Now it the first day now the NP and our PT date will be May 2020, not March 2020, because for employee that was employee. For that yes. employee, for the rest yes. of them, it will still be month. Uh, yes, it will be like that. Uh, supported and unsupported are the same rule. But only for that employee, if any changes happen for that employee, then workday will not process the retro transaction for that. Okay. So I think last time it, uh, the understanding was different. You were saying there are some supported events and there are some unsupported events, and then Jyoti was asking for a list of unsupported events. But I think it is, it is if. Uh, there is any change has happened in employee attributes or any action mm -hmm. has been done, then that date is taken as NRPTD. And then yeah. any, so uh, what all changes will be uh, counted on in the NRPTD changes as in transfer is one understood. Any change okay. will be considered? Yeah, so let me tell you the supported one first. So supported is first one is time off. So, uh, uh, so for time off, so let me tell you, there are two words called in workday. First one is time tracking and the second one is time off. Time tracking, we all know that employee will go ahead and process the time, uh, will update the time tracking, then manager will pro update the time tracking and based on that employee will get a payment based on the time imputed by him or her. For time off, time off is nothing but uh, a sick, basic, uh, sick vacation, holiday, in workday, we call uh, these balances or these uh, deductions or these earnings, which is vacation, which is called as vacation, vacation payment, sick payment, or uh, uh, holiday payment, or statutory holiday. These are this will be called as time off in workday. So, so the first supported event will be if any retro transaction is updated for time off, uh, then it will be a supported event. 
Bugde will process uh, support uh, process the time of retrieval. Uh, <coughs> Bugde will process the retrieval payment for any time of which is entered by the production team. Then uh, we have anything which is updated in workday time tracking. Actually, Tushar, this is now act getting confusing. Earlier, I understood that okay, there has no change has happened in employees. So, say I am there, be, me and Sai both are hired in March. I mm -hmm. got a, I had a transfer in May. So we yeah. both had a salary change effective uh, March today. So because mm -hmm. I had a transfer, my retro payment from March will not be done. So yes, there correct. will not be any retro payment for me. But yes. Sai did not have any change in his profile. So his salary will be, uh, uh, sorry, his uh, salary change will be taken into account and he will have a retro payment. Yes. So that is understanding I've got. But now I'm not understanding what it has to do with now you are writing some events under a supported event. So uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you or uh, okay. So the, the example of this with the March higher rate and all that, this example will be come uh, will come under compensation change. Okay. Okay. So this this event I give you one example about the compensation change. So if any compensation changes are made like between uh, effective March in month of October, then supported event will process a compensation change effective March. But in the case of unsupported, it will not process. So mm -hmm. I'm giving you a list of example or a list of events, uh, what uh, <clears throat> list of events where a workday will process a supported event and unsupported event. The first example is the compensation change. For that, I already gave you an example on this. Second one may be time off. So time off, time off is nothing but suppose uh, Sai is your manager and uh, you are working under Sai and you wanted to uh, and you missed to update your vacation for the last week. Now today you have updated the vacation in the time off section in workday and Sai approved it. Okay. Now, yeah. now the last week comes follow uh, falls in the prior pay period. Now this will be called as a retro period retro payment for you because since for the last five days you were paid you were termed as unpaid for those five days and now these vacation got approved now in the current pay period time off for vacation will will be paid as retro are we following yeah yeah same like time tracking suppose you are a non-exempt employee you are a part-time employee and you missed uh, to approve, uh, miss to update your time tracking, or say as a manager, uh, miss to approve your time tracking. Okay, mm -hmm. last and now in current period he approved. Now workday will go ahead and process retro payment in current period. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then any bonus. So normally uh, we see bonus payments are always late by the client, uh, by the uh, by the client or anyone. If it is current, it is good. But normally, what I saw, it is uh, it is normally uh, late. And, uh, my employee reach out, reaches out to us that stating that I was offered a sign-on bonus. I have not received a sign-on bonus. So like that. So bonus is also called as uh, if so bonus is processed as a retro payment, it will be also processed in in the current period as a retro. Then we have a proposed compensation or, or, com, or, or compensation change. So proposed compensation may be uh, like an example, suppose uh, uh, your current salary is 24,000, but we the HR already proposed your salary will be around $30,000 by this, this month. But however, it was missed in some cases. And if this, if it is get updated later, and, uh, and the date will be same, if we go with the same example March, then it will be a process by workday as supported event and under retro uh, retro. Are we are we following like my examples? Yeah. Okay. Then we have one time payment. One time payment can be anything. It can be relocation payment. It can be a regular payment. Uh, it can be a bonus, it can be a lump sum bonus, it can be anything. 
then we have base pay change a base pay change or the compensation change is one and the same i don't see any difference but it is also uh, you know a part of a supported event then any benefit changes like if you if you have a cafeteria plans like medical dental or vision uh, earlier it was dollar 10 bi weekly basis now you wanted to change by 15 dollar effective january 2020 now it will be also called as retro supported event by the workday uh, then we have leave of absence now leave of absence is always a regular payment like if we go with an example so you you might be also aware of this that a uh, leave of absence is always a retro uh, uh priya are we are you aware of leave of absence no sir no not so you might be aware of leave of absence right yes i know so uh, uh so in short uh leave of absence is nothing but like in india uh if uh, if I expected, uh, if if a woman is expecting uh, a baby, she goes on the leave for six months, and it is a paid leave, right, from a government. Uh, in US or Canada, there is a provision of leave of absence that employer can avail for six months if they have an injury, if, uh, if they have any accidents, or if they are fallen sick. So they have a provision to go or apply for a leave. Of so leave of absence is paid for almost six months, and after six months, a LTD payment gets started. So there is a different rule, a different calculations for all the leave of absence. So uh, the first example is like suppose. I'm sorry. Can we go on a mute? Thank you. So a uh, like example will be suppose the first three months will be hundred percent paid like employee is getting two thousand dollar by weekly so if the as loa is approved it will be hundred percent paid and another three months it will be seventy percent paid just an example so it totally based on the calculation like uh and it will be and uh, it will come under labor absence it, it is a different process like termination like final payment it is a totally different process so here Normally, what happens? Employee goes on a leave, like if uh, goes on a leave for more than five days and ten days, uh, they, it is called as a waiting period. Then they approach the FMLA, uh, FMLA government, which is a family a medical leave administra administration. They reach out to them, they get the approval of the, their STDs or LOAs. Based on that, the payment get, uh, uh, you know, their their payment get approved. Whether the employee will get hundred percent payment or seventy percent payment. So based on that workday, the HCM team go ahead and update this details in in workday, and accordingly, employee will get paid. So just an example, suppose there is a return from leave for this employee, and uh, today is twenty sixth of uh, September, and suppose employee already returned from leave, uh, effective fifteenth of September, okay, but uh, but in the system on twenty sixth the employee is still on leave of absence okay so in this case if employee return effective 15 then this means employee needs to get paid effective 15th of september then this will be a supported event and employee will get paid from 15 to till date since employee return from leave for that so this will be called as retro payment since a 15th september was updated now on 26th are we good Priya? Yeah, for sure. Okay, and uh, and the last one will be additional job. Additional job is uh, uh like how like if I give an example, uh, Sai is working in the US, and uh, as well as he's also working in the Canada for the company. So that will be additional job for him. So normally we don't see such a transaction, but in workday we have that functionality to process the additional job. Are we good for the supported event till now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, what is unsupported? So, unsupported event 
or a rate of the payment it is it is nothing but a prior period changes uh, for which the rate of the pay calculation will go, will pro, will not process or recalculate any earnings or deduction but it will you know report or it will identify for you so that you can manually calculate the difference and uh, enter the um, necessary adjustment or inputs to the workday pay line or pay input okay so the example uh, here is the first example as i said company transfer then we have a pay group change pay group changes like as I, uh, in our in our last session i gave you example of 500 employees uh, like uh, 500 employees there are five sub uh, sub pay groups have been created now say if employee is changing if employee's pay group is changing from bi weekly to monthly okay then it will be called as unsupported event what they will not process any any retro calculation for these employees then uh, we have um <clears throat> again retro hire then retro termination retro time tracking time off or full tax so um uh, did now you might be have a question why I have I have written time tracking time of retro hire here under unsupported event whether it tell whether we can see these are supported event also so any any guess why this is why I have updated time tracking and time off under unsupported event is it related to transfer yes correct and, so, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the, the retro events are belongs to the prior to transfer might be different uh, conditional base absolutely correct absolutely correct so suppose just uh, so suppose there is an employee okay so suppose uh, a employee uh, called priya she uh, she had a time tracking uh, uh, retro payment she had a time of payment and plus she was transferred from one location to another she was transferred okay now here what workday will see workday will see time tracking time off is supported however workday will first follow the nprt date if the nprt date follows the company transfer now here what workday will see workday will see oh, priya is also transferred and there is a there is also time off and time tracking coming under work uh, coming under retro payment so in this case, workday will not process time tracking time off for this employee. Why? Because there is a company transfer in between. So this that's the reason I have entered time tracking time off again under unsupported event. Are we following? Yeah. Priya? Yeah, Tushar. I have a question. So you are saying any of these events will happen, then mm -hmm. uh, those will be not taken. Uh, those retro payments will not be done by uh, workday. So it yes. will be flagged off that these are unsupported events, and then the then the operations people have to manually Manual. calculate and uh, manually calculate and then. And update the in under pay, payroll input, like manually calculate and pay the employees in paycheck. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, in other words, suppose there are there is there are five transactions, and out of five transaction, three transactions have only these uh, changes, only these changes. Like for em for one employee, there will be only base pay change. For an, one employee, there will be only benefit change. For one employee, there will be, there will be only return from the or leave or absence changes and for the other two there is uh, so this will be a supported event but for the other two like there is a uh, compensation change plus company transfer there's a time tracking uh, uh, there's a time tracking plus company transfer so this will be called as unsupported 
Okay. So uh, this mm -hmm. NRPTD will. Uh, so if we, so I'm just trying to understand the sequence. So if the first the time tracking happens and then the company transfer happens, then even the time taking uh, time tracking will also become unsupported. But is there any chance that company transfer has happened first and then time tracking has happened? So it will uh, take into account the time tracking changes. Okay. Uh you are uh, like uh, if i go with your example you are little bit correct but let me phrase that so I'll give you an example a good example okay so suppose uh, i will go with the same example march which will help you okay so priya was hired on 2020 uh, yeah. and the, her salary was updated as 24,000 only and uh, she was transferred in May 2020 okay now there are first things the first things uh, there's a time tracking changes effective March 2020 there's a time tracking just ignore my spelling mistake as of now let me update that. Changes. Effective. Uh, May, okay. July 2020. Now tell me out of these two, which will be uh, we now there is an employee who is transferred also and there is a time tracking changes also. Now tell me out of these two, which what will be a supported event and what will be unsupported event? I think the one uh, first one will be unsupported because that has happened before May, and mm -hmm. the second one will be supported because that has happened after May. Why second one is supported? Because it's happening after May, so there is an unsupported event in May, but there is a supported event after that. Yes. Now, what workday will see then? The end for workday, the NRPT day date will be May twenty twenty hmm. for this. Okay. Hmm. So uh, yeah, when you use any run retro, uh, so let me uh, show you. No, I think we'll go to the system later. You can share the concept. I think I've understood. I was just confirming whether that understanding is correct. Okay. Okay. Okay, so just give me one minute. So uh, we the for every calculation for every payment, if you are going to process any input, whether it is on cycle or off cycle, okay, you have to do a run pay calculation. A run pay calculation, what it will do. Run pay calculation will trigger that paycheck into in progress status. Okay, so for this retro transaction, suppose if you suppose if you go with this example, okay, the for Priya we have updated her time tracking manually in the system, and now the system is updated with her retro dated payment. Suppose 50 hours effective March 2020 we have updated in the system. Now once we updated the paycheck or pay result okay the system status okay it will be uh, <clears throat> it will be uh, it will be turned to requires recalculation why because there are certain types of statuses so if you are going if you are going to if you are going in workday if you are updating any payroll input okay workday there is a, there is already a status which is called in progress in progress means you are ready to complete this paycheck you are ready to complete this paycheck for the on cycle payroll period what that's what the status means but if the status is not in progress then we have to do a calculation we have to we have to do a calc on it so for operations they call it as calc and 
uh, and for say this is uh, this will be a good news for you in people shop if we request for a calc okay a calc is run on a badge it is run on the volumes number of all employees like just an example there if we go with with our session example there are 500 employees and you have updated one employee uh, in the in the pay line now you are requesting for a calc normally we wait for the overnight to see the changes next day since we have updated one day for the people soft platform but but if you are requesting an urgent calc then a people soft production team they will run a calc on all 500 employees am i right no you are right <laughs> yeah but in work day you, you can you can execute a calc only for one employee okay in, in people soft culture it's a similar concept and also if you make changes to only one employee that you can like you know for example you are running a payroll for 10,000 employees and you make changes to only 10 employees and <clears throat> you can run a calc only for that 10 employees like it's called calc variant. okay but uh, the calc access is not given to everyone like all the user uh, user and a uh, processor no it, it, it all depends the company to company like how they want it when I was working with people's or platform, I didn't had an access. And uh, you always have to you know, request the production team the calc for the single employer or for the whole batch. So it depends on client to client or it depends on the access to access. But in Workday, uh, there is an option we can run a calc on a single employee. We, uh, we can run a calc on the whole employee. Uh, whole volumes uh, in this case, but normally, uh, whenever we go ahead and update any payroll input, we don't get any option to save. We directly get an option to process a calc, so that our system will process a calc and will generate that paycheck from request recalculation status to in progress status. Same like uh, if we go with this exam, uh, so same like if we go with this example, retro payment. So all the retro payment. Any input you are going to do in pay, in pay, in <clears throat> uh, in workday, it will ask you for the requires recalculation. Okay. Now uh, the first step will be once you have updated any uh, any changes to workday, uh, you will process a requires recalculation. Then the pay result will convert it or will turn into in progress status. Then it is ready to complete. So as I said, uh, workday. Uh, so the uh, <clears throat> one minute. Okay. So let me uh, share you work day. So this is how Workday looks. Uh, on the right hand side, there will be your profile. So from here, you can change the language you want. Uh, you can change your logo under this. Normally, as an operations point of view, we normally work on this, uh, my reports. So any report which is downloaded by you, you can clearly see under my reports. So this employee, so she downloaded the Logan M. She downloaded and ran the number of reports in Workday. So we can directly download from this area. Here we can change the password, change preference, we'll have a language change. Normally in Canada, we have a French employees, uh, we have English uh, speaking employees. So based on that, we can change uh, their language. This is a notification. Like uh, suppose you ran one report, you ran a retro report. So it will, suppose it is taking a time. 
it is not giving you a report uh, once you click the hit button uh, okay button it will take time after it will take time or it may populate uh, it, uh, <clears throat> after 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you will get notified here that this report has been created you can go and download from my reports this is a inbox uh, inbox uh, this is uh, this is this is normally when it is worked when suppose say you are a manager and uh, and Priya requested, you know, she updated some time sheet or time off in, in her work day. Once she updated submit button, it will come to, to this section. Okay. And then you will go ahead and you will see that approve button here and you have to just click on approve button. You have to validate the hours she inputted number of hours in the time tracking section and based on that uh, you will approve it. So here you will get all the list of uh, notifications what uh, under you like any employees getting hired you will see that employees hired ABC affected this this day. So you will see all those changes uh, in, in here in the section. So normally uh, a payroll team, okay, so there is a welcome on board, there is a my team, supervisory organization. You can see a T diagram here uh, under time of, time of like if you wanted to apply a vacation, sick or holiday, you can apply under time of. Then there's a benefit if you wanted to change any benefits or cafeteria plan, if you wanted to opt for new cafeteria plan, then you will go here. Then there are NAC birthdays. This is this is typically based on client to client okay for my client we don't see such options we don't see uh, such options here we see hardly we see a time off a uh, dashboard uh, reports etc but there are n number of uh, options uh, i can see here there is a compensation there is a settlement so as a payroll from a payroll perspective you see here payroll work area if I click on if I click on this, it will give you a shortcut to process add payroll input by worker. Like as an example, uh, what we saw that we want to process 50 hours for Priya for time tracking manually. So in this case, what I will do, I will add payroll input by worker. So I will click on add. I will update Priya name. Let me find one employee. Yeah. So batch ID. So what is what is batch ID? Normally, as I said, in, in Workday, we have an option to process payroll input in Workday. We have options to pay manually, like what we are doing it, doing now. We can process this way. The second way may be, uh, second way is the EIB load which is inter inter enterprise interface database. Uh, we can do a EIB load to the workday. And there is a third option which is MLT. MLT is normally used by client and EIB is used by the operations team. So whenever they are loading any batch or any uh, list of transaction or bulk volumes, they have to update batch ID. So batch ID help, helps us to identify from which team or when it was processed and we can identify easily if we have a batch ID. It is like a unique identification number. Then we have a start date and end date. Start date and end date will be a period of start date like August 31 to September 13. Period start date and period end date. Special entry. So if we are, uh, so for Priya, we are making a special entry. We are doing it manually. So we have to click on that special entry, pay component. So uh, it was a time tracking. So time tracking will have number uh, uh, number set uh, configured deduction or earning code. 
like just an example of a preact you wanted to process a regs code i don't know. let me check which code is available here okay suppose we wanted to process any earning code for priya for 50 hours we will update that earning code here under pre compare then they, it will ask you for processing uh, processing like it is a one time payment it is ongoing payment is and none of above so normally it will be a one time payment because we are going to process 50 hours only for the one time and we don't want ongoing now uh, just an example ongoing we can update here suppose uh, priya wanted to change her benefit and she wanted a medical deduction uh, to be at ten dollar on a bi-weekly basis okay until uh, 12 31st 2020 like until december 2020 so in that case we will update ongoing so this ongoing what it will do it will it will automatically uh, you know uh, populate the ten dollar in every paycheck until the end date which is december 31st 2020 what is override or adjustment like uh, override is nothing but anything you wanted to override like suppose there is a transaction in workday which is under a, a pay component and just an example of regular earning code and the hours are 50 hours okay and you wanted to change that 50 hours to 60 hours so what you will do you will update the pay component rvgs you will update override okay and you will update 60 hours there what it will do it will automatically delete the 50 hours and it will reflect 60 hours in, the, in this case once you clicked on override what is adjustment same example there are 50 hours which is which is already reflecting in the pay result okay and you wanted to pay extra 10 hours or extra 50 hours so if you update 50 hours and you click on 50 now the result will be it will be 50 hours which is already calculated by workday and 50 hours as extra payment which is added by you as an adjustment so total 100 hours will get paid in the current paycheck for this employee so this is called this that that is adjustment and there are some special category run which is a regular run category special uh, specify run category all run category normally we go with the all run category which is a default we don't go with uh, regular or specific specify run category so why we don't go with this because specify run category first we need to validate which run categories are in progress under the paycheck like if there are any monthly run categories are going on bi weeklies are going on semi monthly semi monthlies are going on we need to validate and specify that accordingly so if we update all run category workday will by default take what is currently uh, is is in effect and will uh, will update that pay result under all run category so what is uh, so again the run category if you update any run category it will ask you for a run category let me check what we have here so these are the run categories which is created here in this uh, tenant now what is payroll work tag so uh, you, you might be aware of this reciprocal agreement uh, for taxes or or any 401k deduction 401k loan suppose an employee took a loan off from 401k and the 401k loan is come into 401k loan 1 loan 2 loan 3 and loan 4 now we need to uh, take deductions from the employee for 401k loan 3 now here under payroll now now here what will suppose i'm processing a 401k loan 3 now under the pay component i will update 401k loan okay but it will ask me which 401k loan for that i have to update payroll work tag work tag as loan 3 so that workday will you know automatically calculate 401k loan is calculated for, calculated for loan 3 so we are get we are giving a work tag here okay or second example maybe uh like in canada 
if we uh, we have this uh, fit calculation federal income tax we have uh, state income tax any state income tax okay for any state income tax we are uh, if we are doing any adjustment it asks you for the payroll work tax so like an example if you go with ontario if you update any tax setup if you calculate any tax setup if you are doing any manual calculation for tax if you update a state income tax and the and the province is ontario so we have to update ontario here and the payroll work tax so it will go ahead and calculate the state work tax accordingly so the state taxes accordingly are we following yes Ishar, i have a question in this uh, run category mm -hmm. so run categories will is what uh, you said it will be created but as in created by whom and what what could be possible values okay Let me check first what is updated here because uh, before our session, like 15 minutes before, I got access to this demo. Like uh, as I said in our last example, if we go with that example of 500 employees, 500 employees are, are you know uh, divided into five categories. Okay, first employee is part-time employee, second employee is, second employee is salaried employee, third employee is commissioned employee. Fourth employee is monthly employees, and the fifth employee is commission plus salary employees. Example. So this is uh, you know run category. So based on this, a workday process their um, their payment. Like uh, like just an example. There are two categories. First one is salary, and the second is commission. Okay. If for the salary one, what workday will do? Workday will pick up a base pay, twenty four thousand. And divide by 26 weeks. Based on that, workday uh, will calculate the bi-weekly payment. But for commission, there is no payment. Commission is processed only when there is an input. It is not an automatic payment. Commission is paid only when there is a uh, there is a commission processed by the client or by the processor. Okay, it is totally based on the processes. So it is not automatically paid. Regular is something. It is paid automatically or it is ongoing. You uh, your annual salary divided into number of weeks or number of bi-weekly pay and it gets paid accordingly. So based on that, that is called run category. So so suppose in the pay add payroll input, if you are updating any payment, if you are updating regular and we are updating specify special run category as commission, it will not accept. So we have to first validate under this employee is part of which category. So Priya is a part of bi-weekly salaried category, run category, and Sai is a part of commission. So I can process a payment for Priya under bi-weekly salaried run category. Okay. 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 So it, pay, uh, it is based on the pay category, like we have seen there are yes. pay categories. Yeah. So in other words, pay group and run categories are one and the same. And when you were showing the other, uh, okay, what was the start date and end date? So there was one start date and end date. So is it? Start date, start date and end date will be a uh, period start date and period end date. This is the first option. Second option may be if you wanted to update a deduction, like a benefit deduction. Benefit deductions are calculated on a monthly basis. So, it, uh, so in that case, it will be like January 1, March 1 to 31st March, then for April 1st to 30th April, then May 1st to 31st May. So it depends on process to process. If you are processing a payroll input or a, like uh, like a bi-weekly salary, it will be under uh, it will be under the payroll period, which is a current period. And if it is a deduction, it has to be under monthly like from first to 31st so it depends what you are going to process the input in one day so normally if we go with uh, go with our practice we will i will say we will we will go with our payroll pay date like uh, here letter pay
So there are no transaction process till this can end. Mm, I don't have an example. Let me check the example. And what day is too easy? I think uh, I can show you a live example in our next session. First, I need to check whether which pay group is active in this pay, in this channel because it is taking time. And um, do we have a session tomorrow? Yes. Same time. Same time. So it's almost uh, one and a half hour. We have to want to continue or uh, uh, no? We'll wind up. In maybe in five minutes. Let me check if we have an example, live example. Or at least you need a five minutes break if you want to continue. Now I got one employee. Sorry, I will take only five minutes and then we can wind up. Okay, so this is the employee, how uh, our employee profile looks like. So here we can see the employee ID, the organization, and the position, then the job profile, and the employee type is regular, commission, salary, uh, a part-time employee. Then we can see the employee hire date, original hire date, right? and number of years, so years of service. If, if the employee is terminated, we can see a termination date here. And we can see the termination date here in this, okay. And on, on the left side, uh, we have time off. Time off, as I said, number of, we can see clearly see the vacation balances, what employee have. So for this employee, the vacation balance is around uh, 30 and the accrued year to date is 25. So here the employee, there's a, there's a uh, leave balance updated here. Th this is something what employee requested and what got approved. So employee requested eight hours for this date, this date for eight hours, and employee uh, requested sick for uh, 4 9 2014 for eight hours. Under performance, uh, normally uh, from a payroll, normally we don't get this access but as the hr or as a manager we will get this access of our performance under performance we get to see the rating uh, my employee uh, got in the last appraisal so for this employee 
employee uh, got a, uh, got meets expectation or rated as ten on on three, and on the competencies. So this is something a manager uh, behavior and all that. How the manager updated the behavior are, uh, between one to five. Education, education details. If there are any developmental plans, then uh, manager can update the developmental plans and update that employee met or not based on that. So normally from a payroll, uh, we don't get this access. Pay is a huge topic for us. Uh, I can explain you because we are we will be mostly working on this date on this section. Benefits same. Uh, now for this employee 401k is updated effective 1st May 2011 and the coverage is 9% compensation will have the employee compensation now for this employee this employee's hourly plan employee set up for 41,849 sure I think uh, the compensation benefit and pay you should cover in details yes yes I'm just yeah I will I will I will cover that in detail. I'm just giving you just an overview. So here there's a dot base pay. Now this employee is hourly. So that's the reason employee hourly is set up here. So from compensation, we can come to know employee frequency or employees hourly or salaried or commission. We can clearly see this from here. First under personal, we can see employee address, employees uh, date of birth, then any documents under contact any contact to emergency but we are I, I don't know whether we are going to get access when we are uh, we are going to be working in the workday tenant then under job job i even in the job i can tell you it will take another one hour session to explain the job so i think uh for today but uh, I think, we are good <laughs> yes go ahead is it needed to cover this job and all is yeah it, it is that it is important because suppose just an example if this employee is terminated uh you will go to the employee worker history here this is the main uh, section where a payroll person will go under worker history here uh, you will see any uh, change employees transferred or not but this is something a little bit confusion a uh, more clarity can be click on this uh, view worker history by category Under this, we see higher date position. If there is any transfer uh, that employee turned from team leader to manager position, we can see this detail here. Employee was hired. If employee is terminated, we can see a termination data here. Under organization, we can see list of organization of pay group changes. Now, for this employee, uh, this employee was you know uh, was uh, was was effectively in the US biweekly. Later turned into US weekly like that under personal data it will be same under compensation we can see compensation change like uh, we see this uh, on the right section so here how it works uh, effective first march 2013 employee hourly rate was 17.38 and it was changed to 18.25 and then from 18.25 it was changed to 19.16 and from 19.16 it was changed to 12.12 .12. now this is the current one and that's what we can see in the compensation section in the home page this is a uh, time off and leave this is the same what we uh, saw in the time off section this is goals and review. Nothing we are going to work on this section because this is something a HR and manager works on it. Talent, career and talent, same. We are not going to work on it. Benefit, same. Union memberships. This is not a payroll part. So let me come to the compensation in the. Here we saw 12.20.12 dollar .12 under compensation. It is 20.12 .12 dollar. .12. So uh, here it will be a latest, but if you wanted to see history details, then we have to go on the job and we have to check worker history. 
now this section is updated by hcm team they have access to update these data we don't have access to update this so we can only view and we can work on the payroll uh, uh, activity accordingly no yeah now it's up now it's we can see So no confusions now with this calendar. No, we're fine. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so in like the other applic applications or other sort tools like uh, PeopleSoft, they have a pay complete or pay confirm day on Monday or a Tuesday based on the client requirement. But uh, and the both payment or uh, the regular payment or the on cycle payment gets completed on the same day. But in the workday, the rate of pay will get first completed in the in the system for that period, and on the next day we are going to process the on cycle. This is the workday functionality, and this is how the every client works for it. So, like example, on Tuesday we have a payroll complete, so the rate of complete will be on eight. Same like for the second pay period, which is uh, September fourteen to September uh, August October four. The payroll complete is at 23rd September and the retro pay complete will be at 22nd. Okay, so for any paycheck or, or any process we go, every process has, has a subcategory. Uh, we, can, uh, we can call it as a first is the retro payment, second is a current dated payment, and the third one is a future dated payment. And I believe for every tool, whether it is a, a Workday, SAP, or PeopleSoft, if any request is processed or feature dated, the system will take care automatically uh, and will process those uh, inst transactions automatically in future since they have updated now with a future transaction. Any process which is current dated, again, it will process automatically by the workday, but it depends. Like example, as I said, uh, the current period is August 31st to September 13th. And the second period is September 14 to October 4th here. So if the current dated current dated pay, 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 payment is processed before cutoff, which is 5th of October, sorry, 5th of September or 19th of September, okay, then it will get processed in the current period. Otherwise, it will fall in a retro payment. A retro payment as usual, anything which is uh, anything which is a prior dated. So it will get uh, it will get processed in workday uh, or it is called as retro, retro payment and workday will first look into it whether it is supported event or unsupported event. Okay, last time I gave example on this higher date and all that. So let me uh, explain you in detail like uh, <clears throat> what exactly uh, retro is. So the, the retro pay calculation, okay, it recalculates um, an employee earnings and deductions uh, that are configured for the retro processing. Okay. Uh, in response to uh, supported retroactive changes, this system recalculates the pay components, which is earnings and deductions for every pay period starting from the period in which uh, the change is effective through the current period. So, The system got freezed for a while. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Is it moving? Yes. Okay. So for that though, every differences of earnings or deductions are processed in the employee currently regular payment paycheck and uh, and all the retro payments are subject to taxes and deductions in the current period okay now uh, last time I, uh, I told you about this example 
which is nr ptd or no rate of prior to uh, prior to date formula uh, <clears throat> prior to date so what is that date so this date is nothing but this is the earliest date for which workday can process a supported event of retroactive changes for any employee uh, this is called as no retro prior to date like example as i said suppose uh, employee was hired on march and suddenly employee's salary got changed in october now for this the earliest date uh, for work day is march 2020 and in this case work day will process this uh, retro payment in october but in the second case the employee was hired on march 2020 then there was a transfer in may 2020 and in october there is a salary change to thirty thousand dollar now here the earliest date will be may 2020 not march 2020 so in this case uh, if we if the hcm team the wa 15 go ahead and process uh, salary change effective march 2020 now what workday will do here workday will first check what is the earliest date if the earliest date which is set up as no retro prior to date uh, as march 2020 then in this case the workday will process the retro payment if it is if workday sees that oh there is a may 2020 but the date was updated as march 2020 salary change then workday will call it out this as unsupported event uh, since the workday will not process a retro payment for these uh, for these transactions because as per operations point of view the retro payment needs to be calculated effective march 2020 but when workday is looking at it workday is looking at the configuration the no retro prior to date is may 2020 are we following yes okay so uh, as I said, supported retro changes uh, made uh, or after this date can be picked up or processed by the retro pay calculation. And uh, if any date, which is uh, workday, will not process any retro changes, uh, <coughs> retro changes prior to this date. Okay. So uh, I have uh, a doubt, Tushan here. Say this. Uh, Tushar, NR... uh, Priya, my name Tushar. is Tushar. Yeah. I am really sorry. I mixed it. So uh, NRPTD, this date, mm -hmm. uh, Tushar, uh, so this is a date set uh, at a company level or is it like uh, at for, I mean, how is this? this date is, is no, it is not at a company level. It is a, in general. This is a workday functionality. Okay. So, so I'm day, saying what will be the that date? Uh, uh, so what will be the that, so example, if your client is going live with Workday, okay, effective January 2021, then this mm -hmm. date will be January 2021. Mm -hmm. On any higher or any higher date for an employee. Okay. Okay, but in between, if employee is transferred from one location to another, suppose from US to Canada or Canada to US, then the rate, no retro prior to date change date will get changed. Now it the first day. Now the NP NRPTD date will be May 2020, not March 2020, because for employee that was, employee, for that yes. employee, for the rest yes. of them, it will still be March. Yes, it will be like that. Uh, supported and unsupported are the same rule, but only for that employee. If any changes happen for that employee, then workday will not process the retro transaction for that. Okay. So I think last time it, uh, the understanding was different. You were saying there are some supported event and there are some unsupported events and then Jyoti was asking for a list of unsupported event. But I think it is, it is if uh, there is any change has happened in employee attributes or any action mm -hmm. has been done, then that date is taken as NRPTD. And then yeah. any... So, uh, what all changes will be uh, counted on in the NRPTD changes? As in, transfer is one understood. Any change okay. will be considered? Yeah. So, let me tell you the supported one first. So, supported is first one is time off. So, uh, uh, so for time off, so let me tell you there are two words called in workday. First one is time tracking, and the second one is time off. Time tracking we all know 
that employee will go ahead and process the time uh, will update the time tracking and then manager will pro update the time tracking and based on that employee will get a payment based on the time imputed by him or her for time off time off is nothing but uh, a sick basic uh, sick vacation holiday in workday we call uh, these balances or these uh, deductions for these earnings which is vacation which is called as vacation vacation payment sick payment or a, a holiday payment or statutory holiday these are this will be called as time off in work day so so the first supported event will be if any record of transaction is updated for time off uh, then it will be a supported event work day will process uh, support uh, process the time off or retro will uh, <clears throat> Bogde will process a retro payment for any time off which is entered by the production team. Then uh, we have anything which is updated in workday time tracking. Actually, Tushar, this is now act getting confusing. Earlier, I understood that okay, there has no change has happened in employees. So say I am there, be, me and Sai both are hired in March. I mm -hmm. got a, I had a transfer in May, so we yeah. both had a salary change effective uh, March today. So because mm -hmm. I had a transfer, my retro payment from March will not be done. So yes, there correct. will not be any retro payment for me. But yes. I did not have any change in his profile, so his salary will be uh, uh, sorry his uh, salary change will be taken into account, and he will have a retro payment. Yes. So that is understanding I've got, but now I'm not understanding what it has to do with now you are writing some events under a supported event. So okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you. Uh, okay. So the the example of this, the uh, March higher date and all that, this example will be come will come under compensation change. Okay. Okay. So this this event I give you one example about the compensation change. If any compensation changes are made like between uh, effective March in month of October, then supported event will process a compensation change effective March, but in the case of unsupported, it will not process. So yeah. I'm giving you a list of example or a list of events, uh, what uh, <clears throat> list of events where a workday will process a supported event and unsupported event. The first example is so compensation change. For that, I already gave you an uh, example on this. Second one may be time off. So time off, time off is nothing but suppose uh, Sai is your manager, and uh, you are working under Sai, and you wanted to, uh, and you missed to update your vacation for the last week. Now today you have updated the vacation in the time off section in workday, and Sai approved it. Okay. Now, yeah. now the last week comes follow uh, falls in the prior pay period. Now this will be called as a retro period retro payment for you because since for the last five days you were paid you were termed as unpaid for those five days and now these vacation got approved now in the current pay period time off for vacation will will be paid as retro are we following yeah yeah same like time tracking suppose you are a non-exempt employee you are a part-time employee and you missed uh, to approve, uh, missed to update your time tracking, or say as a manager, uh, missed to approve your time tracking. Okay, mm -hmm. last and now in current period he approved. Now workday will go ahead and process retro payment in current period. Okay. Yeah. Then any bonus. So normally uh, we see bonus payments are always late by the client, uh, by the uh, by the client or anyone. If it is current, it is good. But normally, what I saw, it is uh, it is normally uh, late. Uh, um, my employee reach out, reaches out to us that stating that I was offered a sign-on bonus. I have not received a sign-on bonus. So like that. So bonus is also called as uh, if so bonus is processed as a retro payment, it will be also processed in in the current period as a retro. Then we have a proposed compensation or or, comp, or, or the compensation change. So proposed compensation may be uh, like an example. Suppose uh, uh, your current salary is twenty four thousand, 
but we the hr already proposed your salary will be around $30000 by this this month but however it was missed in some cases and if this if it is get updated later and uh, the date will be same if we go with the same example march then it will be a process by work day as supported event and under retro plan retro plan are we are we following like my examples yeah okay then we have one time payment one time payment can be anything it can be relocation payment it can be a regular payment or uh, it can be a bonus it can be a lump sum bonus it can be anything then we have base pay change a base pay change or the compensation change is one and the same i don't see any difference but it is also uh, you know a part of a supported event then any benefit changes like if you if you have a cafeteria plans like medical dental or vision the earlier it was dollar 10 by weekly basis now you want it to change by 15 dollar effective january 2020 now it will be also called as retro supported event by the work day uh then we have leave of absence now leave of absence is always a recurring payment like if we go with an example say so you you might be also aware of this that a uh, leave of absence is always a recurring uh, uh priya are we are you aware of leave of absence no sir no not so you might be aware of leave of absence right yes i know so uh, uh so in short uh leave of absence is nothing but like in india uh, if uh if i expected uh, if if a woman is expecting uh, a baby she goes on a leave for 6 months and it is a paid leave right from a government uh in us or canada there is a provision of leave of absence that employer can avail for six months if they have a injury if, uh, if they have any accidents or if they are fallen sick so they have a provision to go or apply for a leave of so leave of absence is paid for almost six months and after six months a ltd payment gets started so there is a different rule a different calculations for all the leave of absence so uh, the first example is like suppose I'm sorry. Can we go on a mute? Thank you. So, uh, a like example will be suppose the first three months will be hundred percent paid. Like employee is getting two thousand dollar by weekly. So, if the LOA is approved, it will be hundred percent paid. And another three months, it will be seventy percent paid. Just an example. So, it totally based on the calculation. Like. Uh, and it will be and it will come under leave of absence it, it is a different process like termination like common thing it is a totally different process so here normally what happens employee goes on a leave like if uh, goes on a leave for more than 5 days and 10 days uh, they, it is called as a waiting period then they approach the fmla uh, fmla government which is a family a medical leave administer administration they reach out to them to get the approval of the, their stds or loas based on that the payment get uh, uh, you know their their payment get approved whether the employee will get 100% payment or 70% payment so based on that work day the hcm team go ahead and update this details in in work day and accordingly employee will get paid so just an example suppose there is a return from leave for this employee and uh, today is 26th of uh, september and suppose employee already returned from leave uh, effective 15th of september okay but uh, but in the system on 26th the employee is still on leave of absence okay so in this case if employee return effective 15 then this means employee needs to get paid effective 15th of september then this will be a supported event and employee will get paid from 15 to till date since employee return from leave for that so this will be called as retro payment since a 15th september was updated now on 26 are we good priya yeah sir okay and uh, and the last one will be additional job additional job is a uh, 
uh, like how like if I give an example, uh, Sai is working in the US, and uh, as well as he's also working in the Canada for the company. So that will be additional job for him. So normally we don't see such a transaction, but in Workday we have that functionality to process additional job. Are we good for the supported event till now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, what is unsupported? So, unsupported event <clears throat> or a uh, letter of payment, it is it is nothing but a prior period changes uh, for which the letter of pay calculation will go, will pro will not process or recalculate any earnings or deduction but it will you know report or it will identify for you so that you can manually calculate the difference and enter the necessary adjustment or inputs to the workday pay line or pay input okay so the example uh, here is the first example as i said company transfer then we have a pay group change pay group changes like as I, uh, in our in our last session i gave you example of 500 employees uh like uh, 500 employees there are five sub uh sub pay groups have been created now say if employee is changing if employees pay group is changing from bi-weekly to monthly okay then it will be called as unsupported event but they will not process any any electoral calculation for these employees then uh, we have um <clears throat> again retro hire then retro termination retro time tracking time off or any tax so um uh, did now you might be have a question why i have i have written time tracking time of retro higher here under unsupported event whether it whether we can see these are supported event also so any any guess why this is why i have updated time tracking time off under unsupported event Is it related to transfer? That's correct. And, so, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the, the retro events that belongs to the prior to transfer might be different uh, conditional base? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So suppose just uh, so suppose there is an employee. Okay. So suppose uh, a employee uh, called Priya. She uh, she had a time tracking uh, uh, retro payment. She had a time of payment, and plus she was transferred from one location to another. She was transferred. Okay. Now here, what Workday will see? Workday will see time tracking time off is supported. However, Workday will first follow the NPRT date. If the NPRT date follows the company transfer, now here what Workday will see? Workday will see OPRI oh, is also transferred. And there is a there is also time off and time tracking coming under work uh, coming under retro payment. So in this case, workday will not process time tracking time off for this employee. Why? Because there is a company transfer in between. So this that's the reason I have entered time tracking time off again under unsupported event. Are we following? Yeah. Priya? Yeah, Tushar. I have a question. So you are saying any of these events will happen. Then mm -hmm. uh, those will be not taken. Uh, those retro payments will not be done by uh, Workday. So it yes. will be flagged off that these are unsupported events. And then the, then the operations people have to manually mm -hmm. calculate and uh, manually calculate and then and update them in under pay payroll input. 
like manually calculate and pay the employees in paycheck okay okay now uh, in other words suppose there are there is there are five transactions and out of five transaction three transactions have only these uh, changes only these changes like for them for one employee there will be only base pay change for an, one employee there will be only benefit change for one employee there will be, there will be only return from the or leave or absence changes and for the other two there will uh, so this will be a supported event but for the other two like there is a compensation change plus company transfer there is a time tracking uh, uh, there is a time tracking plus company transfer so this will be called as unsupported okay so uh, this mm -hmm. nrptd will uh, so if we so i'm just trying to understand the sequence so if the first the time tracking happens and then the company transfer happens then even the time taking uh, time tracking will also become unsupported but is there any chance that company transfer has happened first and then time tracking has happened so it will uh, take into account the time tracking changes okay uh you are uh, like uh, if i go with your example you are little bit correct but let me phrase that so I give you an example a good example okay so suppose uh, i will go with the same example march which will help you okay so priya was hired on 2020 uh, and, and the her salary was updated as 24000 annually and uh, she was transferred in may 2020 okay now there are first chance the first chance uh, there is a time tracking changes effective march 2020 there is a time tracking just ignore my spelling mistake as of now let me update that changes effective uh may okay july 2020 now tell me out of these two which will be uh we now there is an employee who is transferred also and there is a time tracking changes also now tell me out of these two which what will be a supported event and what will be unsupported event i think the one uh, first one will be unsupported because that has happened before may and mm -hmm. the second one will be supported because that has happened after may why second one is supported because it's happening after may so there is an unsupported event in may but there is a supported event after that yes now what work day will see then the end for work day the nrptd date will be may 2020 hmm. for this okay hmm. so yeah when you use any run retro uh, so let me uh show you no i think we'll go to the system later you can share the concept i think i've understood i was just confirming okay. whether that understanding is correct okay okay Okay, so just give me one minute. So uh, we the for every calculation for every payment, if you are going to process any input, whether it is on cycle or off cycle, okay, you have to do a run pay calculation. A run pay calculation, what it will do? Run pay calculation will trigger that paycheck into in progress status. Okay, so for this retro transaction, suppose if you suppose if you go with this example, okay, the for priya we have updated her time tracking manually in the system and now the system is updated with her retro dated payment suppose 50 hours effective march 2020 we have updated in the system now once we updated the paycheck or pay result okay the system status 
okay it will be uh, it will be uh, it will be done to requires recalculation why because there are certain types of statuses so if you are going if you are going to if you are going in work day if you are updating any payroll input okay work day there is a, there is already a status which is called in progress in progress means you are ready to complete this paycheck you are ready to complete this paycheck for the on cycle payroll period what that's what the status means but if the status is not in progress then we have to do a calculation we have to we have to do a calc on it so for operations they call it as calc and uh, and for say this is uh, this will be a good news for you in people soft if we request for a calc okay a calc is run on a batch it is run on the volumes number of all employees like just an example there if we go with with our session example there are 500 employees and you have updated one employee uh, in the in the pay line now you are requesting for a calc normally we wait for the overnight to see the changes next day since we have updated one day for the people soft platform but but if you are requesting a urgent calc then a people soft production team they will run a calc on all 500 employees am i right no you are right okay. yeah but in one day you, you can you can execute a calc only for one employee okay in, in people soft so it's a similar concept and also if you make changes to only one employee that you can like you know for example you are running a payroll for 10,000 employees and you make changes to only 10 employees and you can run a calc only for that 10 employees like it's called calc where you did okay but uh, the calc access is not given to everyone like all the user pro, user and a processor no it, it, it all depends the company to company like how they want it when i was working with people's or platform i didn't had an access and uh, you always have to you know request to the production team the calc for the single employee or for the whole batch so it depends on client to client or it depends on the access to access but in workday uh, there is an option we can run a calc on a single employee we, uh, we can run a calc on the whole employee uh, whole volumes uh, in this case but normally uh, whenever we go ahead and update any payroll input we don't get any option to save we directly get an option to process a calc so that our system will process a calc and will generate that paycheck from request recalculation status to in progress status same like uh, if we go with this exam uh, so same like if we go with this example retro payment so all the retro payment any input you are going to do in pay, in pay, in <coughs> uh, in workday it will ask you for the requires recalculation okay now uh, the first step will be once you have updated any uh, any changes to workday uh, you will process a requires recalculation then the pay result will convert it or will turn into in progress status then it is ready to complete so as i said uh, workday uh, so the uh, <clears throat> one minute okay so let me uh, share you work day So this is how workday looks uh, on the right hand side there will be your profile so from here you can change the language you want uh, you can change your logo under this normally as an operations point of view we normally work on this uh, my reports so any report which is downloaded by you you can clearly see under my reports So this employee, so she downloaded 
the Logan M. She downloaded and ran the number of reports and worked it. So we can directly download from this area. Here we can change the password, change preference, we'll have a language change. Normally in Canada, we have a French employees, uh, we have English uh, speaking employees. So based on that, we can change uh, their language. This is a notification. Like uh, suppose you ran one report, you ran a retro report. So it will, suppose it is taking a time. It is not giving you a report uh, once you click the hit button, OK button, it will take time after it will take time or it may populate uh, it, uh, <clears throat> after 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you will get notified here that this report has been created you can go and download from my reports this is an inbox uh, inbox uh, this is uh, this is this is normally when it is worked when suppose say you are a manager and uh, and priya requested you know she updated some time shift or time off in, in her work day, once she updated submit button, it will come to, to this section. Okay, and then you will go ahead and you will see that approve button here and you have to just click on approve button. You have to validate the hours she inputted, number of hours in the time tracking section and based on that uh, you will approve. So here you will get all the list of uh, notifications what uh, under you like any employees getting hired you will see that employees hired ABC affected this this date so you will see all those changes uh, in, in here in the section so normally uh, a payroll team okay so there is a welcome on board there is a my team supervisory organization you can see a t diagram here uh, under time of time of like if you wanted to apply a vacation sick or holiday you can apply under time off then there's a benefit if you wanted to change any benefits or cafeteria plan if you wanted to opt for new cafeteria plan then you will go here then there are NAC birthdays this is this is typically based on client to client okay for my client we don't see such options we don't see uh, such options here we see hardly we see a time off a dashboard or reports etc but there are n number of uh, options uh, i can see here there is a compensation there is a settlement so as a payroll from a payroll perspective you see here payroll work area if I click on if I click on this, it will give you a shortcut to process add payroll input by worker. Like as an example, uh, what we saw that we want to process 50 hours for Priya for time tracking manually. So in this case, what I will do, I will add payroll input by worker. So I will click on add. I will update Priya name. Let me find one employee. Yeah. So batch ID. So what is what is batch ID? Normally, as I said, in, in workday, we have an option to process payroll input in workday. We have options to pay manually, like what we are doing it doing now. We can process this way. The second way may be uh, second way is the EIB load which is inter, inter, enterprise interface database. Uh, we can do a EIB load to the workday. And there is a third option, which is MLT. MLT is normally used by client and EIB is used by the operations team. So whenever they are loading any batch or any uh, list of transaction, bulk volumes, they have to update batch ID. 
so batch id help, helps us to identify from which team or when it was processed and we can identify easily if we have a batch id it is like a unique identification number then we have a start date and end date start date and end date will be a period of start date like august 31 to september 13 period start date and period end date special entry so if we are uh, so for priya we are making a special entry we are doing it manually so we have to click on that special entry pay component so uh, it was a time tracking so time tracking will have number uh, uh, number set uh, configured detection or earning code like just an example of a priya if you wanted to process a regs code i don't let me check which code is available here okay suppose we wanted to process any earning code for priya for 50 hours we will update that earning code here under pay component then they, it will ask you for processing uh, processing like it is a one time payment it is ongoing payment is and none of above so normally it will be a one time payment because we are going to process 50 hours only for the one time and we don't want ongoing now uh, just an example ongoing we can update here Suppose uh, Priya wanted to change her benefit and she wanted a medical deduction uh, to be at $10 on a bi weekly basis, okay, until uh, 12 31st 2020, like until December 2020. So, in that case, we will update ongoing. So, this ongoing, what it will do, it will, it will automatically, uh, you know, uh, populate the ten dollar in every paycheck until the end date which is december 31st 2020 what is override or adjustment like uh override is nothing but anything you wanted to override like suppose there is a transaction in work day which is under a, a pay component and just an example of regular earning code and the hours are 50 hours okay and you wanted to change that 50 hours to 60 hours so what you will do you will update the pay component rgs you will update override okay and you will update 60 hours there what it will do it will automatically delete the 50 hours and it will reflect 60 hours in, the, in this case once you clicked on override what is adjustment same example there are 50 hours which is which is already reflecting in the pay region okay and you wanted to pay extra 10 hours or extra 50 hours if you update 50 hours and you click on 50 now the result will be it will be 50 hours which is already calculated by workday and 50 hours as extra payment which is added by you as an adjustment so total 100 hours will get paid in the current paycheck for this employee so this is called this that that is adjustment and there are some special category run, which is a regular run category, special uh, specified run category, all run category. Normally, we go with the all run category, which is a default. We don't go with uh, regular or specific specified run category. So, why we don't go with this? Because specified run category, first we need to validate which run categories are in progress under the paycheck. Like if there are any monthly run categories are going on, bi weeklies are going on, semi monthly, semi monthlies are going on. We need to validate and specify that accordingly. So if we update all run category, workday will by default take what is currently uh, is is in effect and will uh, will update that pay result under all run category. So what is uh, so again the run category? If you update any run category, it will ask you for the run category. Let me check what we have here. So these are the run categories which is created here in this uh, tenant. Now what is payroll work type? So uh, you you might be aware of this reciprocal agreement uh, for taxes or the, or any 401k deduction, 401k loan. Suppose an employee took a loan off from 401k and the 401k loan is turned into 401k loan one, loan two, loan three, and loan four. Now, 
we need to uh, take deductions from the employee for four on the loan three. Now here under payroll now now here what will suppose I'm processing a four on the loan three. Now under the pay component I will update four on the loan. Okay, but it will ask me which four on the loan. For that I have to update payroll work tag work tag as loan three. So that workday will you know automatically calculate for on the loan that is calculated for, calculated for loan three. So we are get we are giving a work tag here. Okay. Or second example maybe uh, like in Canada, if we uh, we have this uh, FIT calculation federal income tax, we have uh, state income tax, any state income tax. Okay. For any state income tax, we are uh, if we are doing any adjustment, it asks you for the payroll work tax. So, like an example, if you go with Ontario, if you update any tax setup, if you calculate any tax setup, if you are doing any manual calculation for tax, if you update a state income tax, and the and the province is Ontario, so we have to update Ontario here and the payroll work tax. So it will go ahead and calculate. The state work tax accordingly. So the state taxes accordingly. Are we following? Yes. Ishar, I have a question on this uh, run category. Mm -hmm. So run categories will is what uh, you said it will be created, but as in created by whom and what what could be possible values? Okay. Let me check first what is updated here because uh, before our session, like 15 minutes before, I got access to this camera. Like uh, as I said in our last example, if we go with that example of 500 employees, 500 employees are, are you know uh, divided into five categories. Okay. First employee is part time employee, second employee is, second employee is salaried employee, third employee is commissioned employee, fourth employee is monthly employees, and the fifth employee is commission plus salary employees. Example. So this is, uh, you know, run category. So uh, based on this, a workday pro process the, um, their payment, like, uh, like just an example. There are two categories. First one is salaried, and the second is commission. Okay, if for the salaried one. What workday will do? Workday will pick up a base pay, twenty-four thousand, and divide by twenty-six weeks. Based on that, workday uh, will calculate the bi-weekly payment. But for commission, there is no payment. Commission is processed only when there is an input. It is not an automatic payment. Commission is paid only when there is a uh, there is a commission processed by the client or by the processor. Okay, it is totally based on the processes, so it is not automatically paid. Regular is something it is paid automatically or it is ongoing. You uh, your annual salary divided into number of weeks or number of bi-weekly pay and it gets paid accordingly. So based on that, that is called run category. So so suppose in the pay add payroll input, if you are updating any payment, if you are updating regular and we are updating specify special run category as commission, it will not accept. So we have to first validate under this employee is part of which category? So Priya is a part of bi-weekly salaried category, run category, and Sai is a part of commission. So I can process a payment for Priya under bi-weekly salaried run category. Okay. 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 So it, pay, uh, it is based on the pay category, like we have seen there are yes. pay categories. Yeah, so in other words, pay group and run categories are one and the same. Okay. And when you were showing the other, uh, okay, what was the start date and end date? So there was one start date and end date. So is it? Start date, start date and end date will be a period start date and period end date. This is the first option. Second option may be if you wanted to update a deduction, like a benefit deduction. Benefit deductions are calculated on a monthly basis. So 
it uh, so in that case it will be like january 1 march 1 to 31st march then for april 1st to 30th april then may 1st to 31st may so it depends on process to process if you are processing a payroll input or a, like uh, like a bi-weekly salary it will be under uh, it will be under the payroll period which is a current period and if it is a deduction it has to be under monthly like from first to 30 first so it depends what you are going to process the input in one day so normally if we go with uh, go with our practice we will i will say we will we will go with our payroll pay date like uh, here letter pay So there are no transaction processed in this tenant. Mm, I don't have an example. Let me check the example. And the workday is too easy. I think uh, I can show you a live example in our next session. First, I need to check whether which pay group is active in this pay, in this channel because it is taking time. And um, do we have a session tomorrow? Yes. Same time. Same time. Okay. So it's almost uh, one and a half hour. Uh, we have yeah. to want to continue or? Uh, no, we'll wind up in maybe in five minutes. Let me check if we have example, live example. Or at least we need a five minutes break if you want to continue. Now I got one employee. Sorry, I will take only five minutes and then we can wind up. Okay, so this is the employee how uh, our employee profile looks like. So here we can see the employee ID, the organization, and the position, then the job profile, and the employee type is regular, commissioned, salary, uh, a part time employee. Then we can see the employee hire date, original hire date, right? and number of years, so years of service. If the employee is terminated, we can see a termination date 
here and we can see the termination date here in okay and on, on the left side uh, we have time off time off as i said number of we can see clearly see the vacation balances what employee have so for this employee the vacation balance is around uh, 30 and the accrued year to date is 25 So here the employee there's a there's a uh, leave balance updated here Th this is something what employee requested and what got approved so employee requested eight hours for this date this date for eight hours and employee uh, requested sick for uh, 4 9 2014 for eight hours under performance uh, normally uh, from a payroll normally we don't get these access but as a HR or as a manager we will get this access of our performance under performance we get to see the rating uh, my employee uh, got in the last episode so for this employee employee uh, got a, uh, got meets expectation or rated as on, on, on three and under competencies so this is something a manager uh, behavior and all that how the manager updated the behavior uh, uh, between one to five education education details if there are any developmental plans then uh, manager can update the developmental plans and update that employment or not based on that so normally from a payroll or uh, we don't get this access Pay is a huge topic for us. Uh, I can explain you because we are we will be mostly working on this date on this section. Benefits same. Uh, now for this employee, 401k is updated effective 1st May 2011, and the coverage is 9%. Compensation will have the employee compensation. Now for this employee, this employee's hourly plan. Employee set up for forty one thousand eight forty nine. Sure, I think uh, the compensation benefit and pay you should cover in details. For yes, us. yes, I'm just yeah, I will, I will, I will cover that in detail. I'm just giving you just an overview. So here there's a dot base pay. Now this employee is hourly, so that is the reason employee hourly is set up here. So from compensation, we can come to know employee frequency. Or the employees hourly or salary or commission we can clearly see this from here first under personal we can see employee address employees uh, date of birth then any documents under contact any contact with emergency but we are I, I don't know whether we are going to get access when we are uh, we are we will be working in the workday tenant then under job job I even in the job I can tell you it will take another one hour session to explain the job so i think uh, for today but uh, I think we are good mm -hmm. yes go ahead is it needed to cover this job and all is yeah it is, is important. it is important because suppose just an example if this employee is terminated uh, you will go to the employee worker history here this is the main uh, section where a payroll person will go under worker history here uh, you will see any change employees transferred or not but this is something a little bit confusion a uh, more clarity can be click on this uh, view or history by category under this we see higher date position if there is any transfer uh, that employee turned from team leader to manager position we can see this detail here employee was hired if employees terminated we can see a termination data here and the organization we can see list of organization of pay group changes now for this employee uh, this employee was you know uh, was uh, was was effectively in the us bi-weekly later turned into us weekly like that under personal data it will be same 
under compensation we can see compensation things like uh, we see this uh, on the right section so here how it works uh, effective first march 2013 employee hourly rate was 17.38 and it was changed to 18.25 and then from 18.25 it was changed to 19.60 and from 19.16 it was changed to 12.12 .12. now this is the current one and that's what we can see in the compensation section in the home page this is uh, time off and leave this is the same what we uh, saw in the time off section this is goals and review nothing we are going to work on this section because this is something a hr and manager works on it talent career and talent same we are not going to work on it benefit same union memberships this is not a payroll part so let me come to the compensation in the here we saw 12.20.12 under compensation it is 20.12 so uh, here it will be a latest but if you wanted to see history details then we have to go on the job and we have to check what the history now this section is updated by hcm team they have access to update these data we don't have access to update this so we can only view and we can work on the payroll uh, uh, activity accordingly 